on the south side with Captain Kevin Landis and today he's going to be reading us two stories that you get to listen to later on. And PBL presents our summertime story series by Cops and Kids. And so later today you get to see a tour of the entire fire truck and things around the firehouse and it's going to be such a great time. We hope you enjoy. Bye! So hi there again, I'm Captain Landis of the Bethlehem Fire Department. I'm a 24 year vet. Uh, I'm the training officer for the city of Bethlehem Fire Department. So it's my job to make sure that the firefighters get enough training throughout the year to maintain their skills from anywhere from EMS, basic firefighting, vehicle rescue, technical rescue, hazardous materials. So it's my job to make sure that they're up to speed on all those skills. So today we're gonna uh, read a book called Clifford the Firehouse Dog and Pete the Cat, Firefighter Pete. So Clifford the Firehouse Dog by Norman Birdwell. My name is Emily Elizabeth and this is my dog Clifford. Clifford is not the oldest in my family, but he is the biggest. Last week, Clifford and I went to the city to visit Clifford's brother, Nero. Clifford knew the way. Nero lives in a firehouse. He is a fire rescue dog. I asked the firefighters if Clifford could help them. They thought he was the right color for the job. Just that, then, a group of school children came in for a fire safety class. Nero showed them what to do if their clothing was on fire. Stop, drop, roll. To smother the flames, you stop, drop to the floor, and roll until the fire is out. Clifford thought he could do that. He repeated the lesson for the class. He stopped. He dropped. He rolled. He rolled a little too far. Just then we heard the siren. There was a fire. Nero stayed to guard the children. Clifford and I ran ahead. He cleared the street for the fire trucks. Smoke was pouring from the top floor of a tall building. Clifford pushed the crowd back to a safe place. He saw some people in trouble. Clifford to the rescue. The heavy hose was hard to unreal. Clifford gave the firefighters a hand. But then he saw that the fire hydrant was stuck shut. Thank goodness Clifford was there to unstick it. They had to get the smoke out of the building. Clifford made a hole in the roof. The firefighters were calling for more water. Clifford found some. He helped clear the smoke away. When the fire was out, Clifford made sure the firefighters got out of the building safely. They were grateful for everything he had done to help. We gave the firefighters a ride back to the firehouse. Clifford was a hero. The fire chief made him an honorary rescue fire rescue dog, just like his brother Nero. Here are some Clifford's fire safety rules. Save the number of your local fire department in your home phone. Ask your parents to save the number in their cell phone contacts too. 
No, two different ways out of a firehouse, out of a house or apartment building. Choose a place nearby where you can meet the other members of your family if you leave your house and get separated. Never go to the back, never go back to into your house for anything if you're if the building's on fire. Tell your mom or dad to change the battery battery in the smoke alarm every year on your birthday. Do not play with matches and never use the stove without an adult. And the end. There's a couple of important messages in the book. First, if your clothes ever catch fire, we want to stop, we want to drop, and we want to roll. We also want to cool the, the burn. So we will add that into there. And you also want to know what the emergency number for police fire and EMS is, and that is 911. And we never play with calling 911. We only use that if there's an emergency. All right, our next book that we're going to read is Pete the Cat, and it's called Firefighter Pete by James Dean. We're going on a class trip today, says Principal Nancy. She leads the class to a bright yellow bus. Everyone climbs aboard. I wonder where we are going, says Pete. They're going to visit the firehouse today. The bus parks next to the bright red firehouse. Pete and his classmates are excited. The firehouse is huge. It is so big it can hold two long red fire trucks and all of the firefighters equipment. The firefighters show the kids around. They give everybody a turn to ring the old brass fire bell outside the firehouse. Ring. Then all the kids take turns sliding down the firefighter's pole. Wee! Kaylee calls as she glides down. The firefighters allow the kids to try on their gear. Firefighters wear a lot of equipment. First Pete pulls on the heavy black overalls. Then he steps into the tall black boots. A firefighter helps Pete put on the heavy yellow jacket. Finally, they place a hard black helmet on Pete's head. All this gear is very heavy. Pete can barely move. The firefighters allow the kids to explore one of the fire trucks. Kaylee sits in the driver's seat. She presses a horn. It's so loud that all the kids cover their ears. Then Pete turns on the sirens and lights. The sirens blare, woo-wee, woo-wee. The lights flash red and yellow. Suddenly a loud bell rings in the firehouse. Uh-oh, it's the fire alarm. There's a fire in town. Gear up, Pete. The firefighters scramble into their gear very quickly. Pete puts on his gear too. They all climb aboard the fire truck and turn on the siren and lights. Firefighter Pete and the firefighters are on their way. The fire engine races through town and the lights flash round and round. A firefighter presses the horn. All the cars move out of their way. There's the fire. It's hot and loud, but the firefighters know exactly what to do. They work together as a team to connect the fire truck to the fire hydrant. Then the firefighters also attach a long heavy hose to the fire truck. Fire, fire Pete gives a sing, single and the firefighters turn on the water. Whoosh! The water gush, gushes out very fast. Several firefighters must hold the hose to control it. Pete helps direct the hose as they spray the fire with water. The fire is starting to go out. There is smoke everywhere. Suddenly, Pete hears yelling from the roof. Uh 
Uh oh, it's Grumpy Toad. He needs to be rescued. The firefighters raise a long ladder from the truck. Crank, crank, crank. The ladder goes up, up, up. Firefighter Pete and another firefighter help Grumpy Toad climb down the ladder carefully. Yay, the fire is out and everyone is safe. The firefighters drive back to the firehouse. They take off all their gear. They pat Pete on the back and say, good job, Pete. Firefighter Pete helps save the day. And that's it, the end. All right, so today we're at uh, Bethlehem Fire Department, Company 1 that serves the south side. Uh, so we respond to police, or, or not police calls, but EMS calls, fire calls, auto accidents. So in a daily life of a firefighter, they work two days and then two nights and then they're off for four days. So some of the responsibilities that they do during the day is when they come to work, they relieve the uh, firefighter that's going off shift, they find out anything that's new or wrong with the truck, and then they get to work right away. Uh, the first thing they do is to make sure they check out the truck to make sure that all the gear that's supposed to be on a truck is there and that the gear is working. So they'll, they'll bring out their uh, turnout gear. Uh, we call it personal protective equipment. They'll put that on the truck. They'll check out their air pack, make sure that it has air in the cylinder, that everything's working. They'll log into that air pack. It, uh, we have a key fob and it puts our name to that air pack. Uh, in case anything would happen to us, we, we know who is down in a fire. Then they'll check out and make sure the truck's there. That will take them anywhere from a half hour to an hour. Then they usually end up in the uh, kitchen. They'll make a, a quick snack, maybe make a cup of coffee. Uh, they'll sit around the, the kitchen table, uh, talk to the other firefighters what they did on their days off. And then there might be some training going on during the day, which is what we saw going out on the truck floor. So engine five and seven came across town here and they were set, setting up a three to one haul system and lowering system. And it's a, a technical skill uh, that firefighters use in case somebody's trapped on the side of a cliff or fell off a cliff or uh, stuck on the side of a building such as a window washer. So it's important that we keep up on these skills. So uh, training will take place in the morning. If there's no training, we just got done testing all the hose. So every year, every section of hose is tested. Make sure there's no leaks, no holes in it in a hose. Uh, we go out, we're service testing hydrants right now and make sure all the hydrants work. Uh, are there any kind of issues with the hydrants that the water department needs to know about? Do we have to replace a hydrant? And right now we're in the process of replacing the threads on the front of the hydrant to make our job a little bit easier to connect the, the five inch hose to the hydrant. So over the next few years, you're gonna see different hydrant adapters on the hydrants. There's 13,000 hydrants in the city. So our goal is to get about 5,000 a year. Uh, we'll see how far that gets us. And then the last thing we do on a yearly basis is we service test the pump. So each pump is either 2,000 gallons a minute that it can pump or 1,500 gallon a minute. So to make sure that that truck can perform what it says it's capable of performing, we'll, we'll do a service test. And then there's other training that takes place throughout the year, plus PR programs, that, uh, just like this that uh, we're doing here, people stop by the firehouse. And unfortunately with COVID, you're not allowed to come to the firehouse, so we'll do this virtual tour and we'll come to you instead. So here is Engine 5. Uh, Engine 5 serves Northeast uh, Bethlehem. It's our newest fire truck. It's considered a ladder truck. Uh, the reach on the ladder is 107 feet tall and the truck cost over $1 million. It has rescue capabilities for vehicle entrapments. It can fight fire, carries 500 gallons of water, plus hose, and also can be used as an aerial device. All right, here we see engine four, and here is the pump panel. So the operator, the driver of the vehicle, uh, when he gets to a call and there's a structure fire, um, he will pull certain levers and control the amount of water coming out of the various hoses that are pulled off the piece. And then here is our gear rack. These are the off-duty firefighters where they store their gear. And this gear keeps us from getting burned up in a fire and it's very expensive. A set of gear right now is over $3,000.
per firefighter. All right, boys and girls, that concludes our tour of the Bethlehem Fire Department today. Hope you had fun. We hope that we can join you next year. So long. Thank you.